Hello, welcome to another round of championship predictions from the Honest Football Podcast. I'm Craig Savage, and with me as always is Mr. Daniel Cody. Let's have a quick recap what happened over the weekend. It was uh, two games push, uh, postponed to start with. Uh, Friday night's game, Bournemouth feet Nottingham Forest because of Storm Eunice. And Blackburn versus Millwall was called off very late at 3pm due to the snow. However, it was still a fantastic day for myself with two perfect scores, a late Coventry winner against Barnsley and that 2-2 draw between Stoke and Birmingham. Daniel Cody also gets a perfect score with Derby's late winner against Peterborough, but he only gets one more point after that in the QPR Hull game. So overall, I win by 10 points to four. So very good uh, weekend. Will it carry on in midweek? We have a full set of fixtures and we start off with Bristol City. They're at home to Coventry. Uh, Bristol City, 1-2-1 at home to Middlesbrough. And Coventry obviously won late against Barnsley. Uh, let's start with Bristol City. Done well. Yeah, I was really annoyed in the end, to be honest, because obviously I said I had a sneaky feeling Middlesbrough wouldn't win and then I bottled it and went for a draw. But let's be fair, Borough had most of the chances in that game albeit a very resilient Bristol City side who are becoming better at home. I think that's a fair comment. Coventry, as you mentioned, they left it late as well. A bit like uh, Derby, as we'll mention a bit later on. 93rd minute winner against Barnsley. It was deserved. Coventry had had nearly 20 shots on goal. Barnsley hadn't had a shot on target the whole match. So you've sort of got opposites here. Coventry struggled to a win despite being dominant. Bristol City nicked a win despite not being dominant. I have to start in the usual way, I'm afraid, Craig. I'm going to sit on the fence. I'm going to go for the championship's favourite scoreline. Oh, you're going to get hated in the comments. The performance didn't match the result. Um, defensively, no. it did. Defensively. Well, yeah, defensively, they, they, were, they, were a bit, they were better. Mills would obviously be a bit frustrated, but I, I would say Proceed deserved to win on the day. Let's, let's be honest. Obviously, Coventry worked hard. Puff, Huff and Puff. Another late goal for them. They were obviously one of the highest scorers of scoring late goals. Coventry. I'm going to go for a Coventry win. By two goals to one. I think Bristol getting will... hate now. <laughs> Both of us. <laughs> no, I, I think Coventry will um, just do enough. I think Bristol will try and frustrate them, to be honest. But I think Coventry's quality. I know they haven't done well recently away from home. Coventry, I think, but I think just be enough. So who gets the hate? We'll find out next week. Uh, right, next up, it's Hull versus Barnsley. Big game down at the bottom of the championship. Hull. Drew one all with QPR and Barnsley lost late on to Coventry. We'll start obviously with Hull. Good away point. And negative was that injury to Matt Ingram. Obviously, we wish him a speedy recovery because it did look nasty. Yeah, it didn't look good. Obviously, they let, let, let in the goal after he went off, which was unfortunate. But overall, it's a very good point. The one thing I will say, Craig, and I don't want to keep harping on about it, is Shotter Avaladzi came in to replace Grant McCann to expand the style of football, to be more aggressive, to be more attacking. They had 30% of the ball and two shots on target, albeit against a very good side. But I wouldn't say I've seen a huge change in philosophy, particularly away from home, to under Grant McCann. Albeit when they get the ball, they try and keep it a little bit more. I wouldn't say there's been that shift yet, but that will take time. Barnsley... Look, it was only what the weekend's episode we were talking about them finally having that bit of hope. And now they lost in the 93rd minute. They're nine points away again because both Derby and Reading won. You just have to wonder about the psychology. They created next to nothing against Coventry and they were lucky to be nil-nil going into stoppage time. Away from home, they've been atrocious all season. They've only picked up four draws. We're into unpredictable season of the championship though. So I'm going to go for another draw. I'm going to go for a blank. I think this game's going to be either sublime or ridiculous. So I'm going for nil-nil. I think it'll be a dull one, but it could easily as be 4-3. I'm going to go for a whole win. I, I don't think we're going to expect the best out of what Shot of Lars is going to do. I think he needs to get over the line for this season. And then yeah. if they do say in the championship, then obviously he has that summer, he can recruit and then work into this philosophy of what he wants from this whole side. Uh, Barnsley... It's, a, it's another kick in the teeth, to be brutally honest. Um, they thought they can get away with that point. Didn't get over the line, unfortunately. Um, but I think Hull will just have enough for me. Two goals, two nil. Right, next up, it's a big game for the playoff race. It is Middlesbrough 
versus West Bromwich Albion. Uh, Millsborough lost 2 1 to Bristol City, a rare defeat for them. West Brom lost 2 0 at Loon. You went to watch West Brom yesterday. Um, no goals again. Okay, first half, but second half, terrible. Yeah. Um... I mean, at the start of the season, who would have gone West Brom not to score in five games? It's utterly ridiculous, isn't it? And there's a couple of things on West Brom very quickly. The Going forward, the chances they had in the first half were all awful setups from Luton. So there's one that came from a terrible goal kick, one that came from an under-hit back pass. And I mean, how they didn't score, I don't know. Uh, the only time they got particularly close was Jed Steer nearly threw one in his own net. There were a couple of other times he made good saves as well. The second half, though, when the onus was on them to create, there was nothing. It, what really surprised me was the reaction to going one nil down. You thought there was going to be this big turnaround and you just didn't see it. You almost saw them deflated and saying, here we go again. Um, great second goal for Luton, but West Brom again, defensively, just giving so much time, not pressing, not giving that, that urgency to try and get back into the game. I thought the centre halves really struggled with the two big men, Jerome and uh, Adebayo. The back three looked very suspect. I worry about them. I can see why they're conceding goals. And I know Middlesbrough lost to Bristol City, but they created a lorry load of chances. They were in good form before that. They were scoring goals for fun. And they're the third best team in the league at home. So Middlesbrough, for me, win, win handsomely unless West Brom find something magical. I'm going to go 3-0. I think it'll be quite big. Yeah, it didn't really look like they were scoring it. It's like from their own play. Obviously, on the, as you said, the, the two mistakes, uh, Luton pretty much handed it to them on the plate, really. But after that, yeah, it just felt nothing and everything seems to be wrong. Steve Bruce has got a massive job in his hands. There's no um, new manager bouncing this side already. He can't even score yet. And I've and I, I got Sagler for saying, Bristol City can't score for Toffee. West Brom can't score for Toffee <laughs> now. Um, yeah, it just, it just looked to play. The fans are saying you're not fit to wear this shirt. And this is a pretty good West Brom squad and they're not doing anything. And it's just gone horribly, horribly wrong. At the, pretty much at the wrong time in the season. Um, let's be, be really honest. Millsborough, on the other hand, yeah, rare defeat. Very poor in a day. They'll bounce back. For me, will West Brom score? They have to score at some point. I made that mistake at the weekend, though. <laughs> I'm going to go Millsborough to win by two goals. Two, one. It's coming. <laughs> you heard it here first, people. I think West Brom will score. Anyway, next up, it is Preston off end versus Nottingham Forest at detail. Preston lost 3 2 to Reading and Nottingham Forest travelled to Bournemouth on Friday and there was no game. Uh, so let's get, obviously, let's talk about Preston. Um, Deserved to lose. Yeah, it was the first time I would say I was particularly alarmed by the performance. But again, we saw in recent games they weren't scoring many. Reading have got an atrocious defence. We know that. And they kept the ball. They huffed and puffed. They had loads of shots, but they didn't create many great chances. Uh, obviously, they had a moment of individual magic from Cameron Archer again, who's become a wonderful signing. But Reading created the better chances for all that Preston had more shots on goal. And it's very easy to keep shooting from 20, from 25 yards on the turn from the edge of the box and build up your shooting stats. But you've got to create chances to win games. And uh, and Preston, sorry, look, when they've been winning, it's been one nils and they've been drawing nil nil. They're not a fluent scoring side. Ryan Lowe's going to need time for that. I think the week off really helps Forrest because it was a frantic game against Stoke, as we mentioned last week. So having that little breather will be great for them. And because of other results, if they win it and other results go away, they could be in the playoff places come the end of the day. It's unlikely, but it could happen. So I have to go for Nottingham Forest to win. I think they've got more cutting edge. I think they're more ruthless. And Preston, for all of their positives in recent weeks, the defence was a huge worry after four games without conceding. And I think they'll concede three again. I'm going 3-1 Forest. Um, I, I'm going to go Forest to win by two goals to one. I think it'll be a tight game. Preston, they felt like going two, three steps back for that the defending uh, from that game. It was just really comical. Um, and as a defender, it'd be really annoying. I, I don't think Preston will go out of form. This is probably a blip. I, was, I, I'm gonna, I know I said Forrest were going to win this game, but Forrest are a good side. They're, they're flying at the moment. So, yeah, 2-1 to uh, Forrest. Right next up at the Swansea.com stadium, it is Swansea versus Bournemouth. Um, Swansea were atrocious. They lost 4-0 to Sheffield United and Bournemouth had some stadium damage. So, Swansea, it happened again. It happened again. It's 
it's, they are the ultimate sublime to ridiculous side, aren't they? They were awful in a 3 0 defeat against Stoke. Brilliant at home to Bristol City. Really solid, deserved to win. And I know Sheffield United were as ruthless as they've been all season. They took most of their chances. But the thing that worried me is three of the four goals came from exactly the same area of the pitch in that left offensive channel. It was predictable. I mean, the first and third goals weren't far off identical. And it's got to be addressed. You can't be like this away from home. They've now got the fourth worst away record in the league. They'll be delighted to be at home where they have been better their last two games. But they're coming up against Bournemouth, who are the best away team in the league. They've only conceded 11 in 16 games on the road. And I can't see them conceding to this Swansea side. We saw what happened when Luton went there. And if you can shut them out, if you can defend low, you're very unlikely to concede great chances. Bournemouth will give up possession. They'll nick one on the break. It's going to be a classic promotion-style win, 1-0 to Bournemouth. Uh, I'm going to go 2-0 Bournemouth. It was too easy for Sheffield United, I'll yeah. be honest. Um, same mistakes all over again. If Baldock had his shooting boots on, uh, it could have been six. Uh, let's be very honest. It's just a pass from the back. And then try and pass it square to the left back. And it gets caught out. It's so easy to observe. And it's just too many mistakes like that. And it's every week I see same mistake from Swansea. And they never learn from it. <laughs> and you said that needs to be addressed. And they're going to come against, Bo- obviously, Sheffield who are flying. Bournemouth who are obviously getting back to winning ways. You can't, you can't do these against these sort of teams. I re- I'll be brutally honest. You can get away with it with like the teams in the barn, but you can't do it. Like, you can't keep getting away with it. You need to ch- change your style a little bit. Uh, but Bournemouth will win the game by two goals, 2-0. Two right, next up, it is Paul Ince's Reading against Birmingham City. Reading under Panovic's last game. He won for the first time in forever by three goals to Preston. Birmingham drew two all away at Stoke. Um, you will check out the Paul Ince read in the video on the eye above. We will go into that in more details. But let's talk about the Reddin's last game. They turned up. They turned up. Obviously, we know now that Panovic knew before the game that he was going. It had been mutually agreed. I think he's alluded to the fact that it took a bit of a personal toll on him. We talked about the instance on Wednesday night after the Peterborough game. They played really well. They won the game and look, surprise, surprise, they've got their first team back. They're back to full fitness and they're starting to play well. Stoke Birmingham was actually the, one of the games of the weekend. You called it. I didn't see it coming in a million years. Both sides were ruthless. Birmingham, look, after the loot and win, it's one of the things we've accused Birmingham of this season. They've very rarely put together two good performances in a row and they did that. I'm going to go for Birmingham to win. I think it's the wrong time to change manager. I've said I don't think it was the manager's fault all along, despite the fact he was always going to be the scapegoat. Birmingham are back in form 2-1 Birmingham because Reading always concede. They've got the worst defence in the league. Yeah, no, I'm going to go for a draw in this game. No, not in this new manager bounce. Birmingham, good, but then they drew a bad performance. But I think they still have enough to get the point, but it won't be a pretty game. I generally do not know what to expect from this red inside come choose um on win Tuesday. So I'm gonna just stick that go down the middle and bottle it and go for a championship favorite scoreline of one one. Right, next up it is Derby County versus Millwall. Uh Derby won late on by a goal to nil against Peterborough. Millwall traveled to Blackburn in the snow and didn't play. Good news for Derby is they've now five points off now currently third from bottom. Negative wise. No, Tom Lawrence got sent off. Yeah, it, I've got to say, Craig, it was a bit of a throwback. It was one of the dirtiest championship games with flying tackles and everything I've seen in years. It was just awful. There were some atrocious tackles. There could have easily been a couple more red cards, but it's a great win. It's a great win. Louis Sibley, a youngster off the bench, a wonderful finish, a bit of quality to end the game. And Derby are another one of those sides who just keep producing the late show, particularly at Pride Park. I do worry, though, against the Millwall side who are going to be big, strong and physical against the young Derby team. A Millwall side that have had a week off where Derby with their thin squad are playing every three games. Hopefully that ties them out by next Saturday because we all know who they're playing then. But I don't know if it's going to be too much. Derby very rarely lose at home. They've actually got the seventh best record at home in the whole championship this year. If Millwall had played at the weekend, I would have gone for a 1-0 Derby win. But I'm going to sit on the fence. So they can see the late goal, championship's favourite scoreline. I know they're form, Derby, but Millwall turn up when they need to turn up. So I'm going to go for a Millwall win by two goals to one. I expect a physical game. 
if if Saturday's game was physical with the two red cards and the late check and the tackle was like that, I expect it to be slightly worse. Obviously, losing Lawrence is a blow. Stupid tackle. End of the day, I, I, he does that for some silly reasons. Quite a great, great feet, can hit a ball really well, but then loses his head for these sort of moments. And when, as your captain, you can't do that, and that's so st- stupid, um, in my opinion. But W one one nil. So credit, credit, true. Big game for them down there. But yeah, I think Mill will, will just out physically, out physical them by two goals to one. Right, next up, it's Fulham versus Peterborough at Craven Cottage. Fulham lost at home. They lost 2-1 to Huddersfield. And uh, Peterborough obviously lost late on to Derby. We, we said about Peterborough, these two games were crucial for Peterborough. And they picked up one point. Yeah, and they've not scored. Not scored in four games in the championship now. Uh, five games in the championship, sorry. Four games in all competitions. <sighs> I'm going to say it. I think it's done. I really think it's done because... Reading, they may well have a dip under under Paul Ince now, depending on which way you think it's going to go. But I can't see Derby doing it. So I'm worried about Peterborough. Look, Fulham, they don't lose two in a row. They've had these odd performances this season and they weren't terrible against Huddersfield. They were just, I mean, Tom Kearney made a mistake for the first goal. There was a couple of poor defensive errors. They had an onslaught towards the end, but just couldn't find the back of the net. I know you had a, a view thinking a penalty was soft. I think legally it was a penalty, but it was soft, wasn't it? It was just one of those. But they'll bounce back. They'll bounce back in style. My only question for this game is what score am I putting the other side of the zero? If this was any other team, you'd call me ridiculous. I'm going for 6 0. And I'm sorry to Peterborough fans, but I think this is going to be an absolute mauling. Worst thing for Peterborough. What's Fulham losing yeah. the weekends? Because you know the kind of bounce back. I don't see it being like the same, like what happened in December of four or five straight draws and that stuff. But you remember last time they Fulham lost, they bounced back with a 7 0 win, I think. So, and it's probably going to be the same again. I'm not going to go 6 0. I'm not going to go 7 0. I'm going to go 4 <laughs> 0. Um, but you've got to remember the first game was 1 0. Ended only 1 0 yeah. in, in, in the reverse fixture. But that was at London Road. This is at Craven Cottage. There'll be fire under that for them side because they really want to bounce back after losing. So I'm going to go by four goals to nil. Sorry, Peterborough fans. Uh, right, next up is the team that beat for them at the weekend. It's Huddersfield there at home to Cardiff. As I said, Huddersfield beat them 2-1 in the early kickoff. Cardiff drew 1-0 against Blackpool. We have to give a lot of praise for Huddersfield because we we said that they've done under the, one under the radar. We, they're obviously in the playoff hunt. But to come away with a 2 1 victory at Craven Cottage speaks very highly about themselves. Yeah, and I'll be honest, conceding one at Craven Cottage is virtually as good as the four clean sheets they kept before it for me because that's a wonderful effort. Cardiff, disappointment a bit, but Blackpool are such a resilient side on the road. I don't know why I didn't just go for one all. They're in decent form. They've got themselves well safe now. And Steve Morrison, let's be fair, came in as an interim to the end of the year. I think. We had our doubts to an extent, and he's done a really solid job, so he has to be praised. Ultimately, I think Huddersfield, the question's going to be how much that's taken out of them. If it's not too much, I'd back them to win it. Cardiff are pretty strong on the road, but they can see goals. I think this is going to be a secret thriller. I'm going to go for 3-2 to Huddersfield, and I've just got a feeling it's going to be the game of midweek. And we're in unpredictable season in the championship, so it doesn't matter what you go for now. I think really unpredictable season in the championship since the first game of the season. Let's be uh, let's be honest. Um, I'm gonna go draw. Huddersfield are very good at home. I I've got nothing in between these two sides. Huddersfield are very good. They'll be buoyant of that like, two one away win. Cardiff they're doing okay. Cardiff they're doing okay. So yeah, I think one one be the result. Uh, right next up is the team that Cardiff played on Saturday. Blackpool they're away to QPR. QPR also drew one all with Hull. QPR they've got to be careful. They have got to be careful because they're sliding. And do you know what's annoying about this is if they'd have found their form in the last four or five weeks, they'd quite comfortably be in second place at the moment as well. So they've let it go at a time where it matters most. I promised myself after yesterday's game when I just bottled going for a Blackpool one all draw on the road and then they drew one all that I was going to go for one all today. But I just know if I do that QPR are going to win and I'm going to be really frustrated. So... For no logic whatsoever, I'm going to go for QPR to win 2-1 and likely make exactly the same mistake as I made with the Cardiff game for Blackpool at the weekend. But QPR's home form, bar the last couple, against Middlesbrough and Hull, a new manager bounce and a Middlesbrough side that were flying, they've still been very good. They've only conceded 14 in 17. 
And I just think they're going to edge it. But Blackpool, by the way, we've said it a number of times. Fantastic season. Critchley's doing a wonderful job. Um, I'm going to go 1-1. One, one. Um, <laughs> I just feel... some. I think... I don't know if they've got Smith in QPR at the moment. They're just, they're just not clinical, I always say. The forms have gone a bit wayward. They had an offside goal uh, from a Doma. Very hard to call from the angle we got given. Blackpool, good point away at Cardiff. Unlucky against Bournemouth recently as well. They could, they can, they can also mix it as well. So I, I think one one would be a fantastic result for Blackpool away at QPR. QPR, I think we'll get frustrated again. So one all for me. Right next up is a big game in that pr- uh, promotion hunt. It is Sheffield United versus Blackburn at Bramwell Lane. Sheffield United cruised the fixture uh, with that four nil win against Swansea. Blackburn was called off because of the snow. Yeah, it's going to be a. Uh... An interesting game because you've got a Sheffield United side who are buoyant, who have gone another game without conceding. You've got a Blackburn side who will be rested, probably needed the week off given the recent form. They've had four games without scoring again. Sheffield United were ruthless. George Bulldog, I know you mentioned he didn't have his shooting boots on, but the goal he did score was bloody fantastic. I've got to say, the finish was lovely. I love them when they clatter off the underside of the crossbar. My favourite type of goal. So it's, all about, it's all about the noise. All about the noise. And it's all about the noise. Look, Sheffield United... The one thing I want to say for Paul Heckenbottom, because we did we did get this one wrong by the looks of things at the moment, is that he clearly had that side well drilled and had Swansea well watched. Because we mentioned it on the Swansea bit, the goals came from similar areas. They exploited the weakest area of that Swansea defence and they created chances galore down Swansea's left channel of defending. So I think they were brilliant. They were ruthless. Whether they can be ruthless every week, I don't know. We haven't seen evidence of that this season. I think it's going to be a lot tighter, but Blackburn are in poor form. So I'm going to go for Sheffield United to win 1-0, and then they'll only be one point behind Blackburn. Oh, yeah, I'm going to go Sheffield United to win. Uh, that was probably Sheffield United's best performance uh, this season, in my opinion. Uh, I know they had a 6-2, but I thought this was better. A lot better. They were ruthless, aggressive, pressing very highly. Didn't let Swansea get out of their area. Took their chances very, very well. Was a, obviously, there was a brilliant strike on the volley. Blackburn, I see no Brereton Diaz, he's out for a while, unfortunately. And I did, it's a tough month for Blackburn, and I know he didn't play more, but it's another tough opponent, and it's going to be another defeat for Blackburn, in my opinion. So I'm going to go by two goals to one for Sheffield United. And the final game is the big one. It is the Nathan Jones derby. It is Stoke versus Luton Town. Stoke drew two all with Birmingham and Luton beat West Brom by two goals to nil. Apart from that, okay-ish first half, but a little couple of mistakes. Very good second half. Yeah, look, gave away a couple of chances in the first half, which against most teams in form, they would take chances. You would expect the Stoke side to do that because they've scored goals galore in recent weeks. Second half, Luton were fantastic. And the truth is, if Luton win all their home games, the chances are they'll be in the playoffs at the end of the season. So... I think there might be a little bit of risk and reward with that. Stoke scoring goals galore. The issue the last two games is they've let in some sloppy goals. They've not actually been that great at home this season, but under the lights, they've been a lot better. Luton always lose at Stoke, regardless of how well they play. And I can't predict any different. I really think Nathan Jones will rotate the squad. So he's got them fit for Derby and then Chelsea the week after in the cup. I'm going to go for 2-0 Stoke. I think it's going to be a really comfortable win 1-1 one, one in this game Jones will re- rotate the side a little bit Stoke wise yeah they've been a bit off lately Stoke it's just been yeah no yeah no good point I'll probably say against Birmingham because Birmingham obviously will point from that 3-0 win against Luton last time uh, but Luton don't seem to win at Stoke I'm sick of Luton not winning at Stoke Will Nathan Jones celebrate if Luton beats Stoke? I don't know. Of course he will. We want to see it. We want to see it, damn it. Uh, but no, I, I will take a point. I, I will be happy with that, I'll be honest. Let's have a quick recap what we just predicted for this midweek edition of the Championship Predictions. Uh, so apologies to Peterborough United if we've both gone for hammering for, uh, for Fulham. A lot of 1-1 draws. I've gone for 1-1 draws. Daniel Cody has gone for 2 uh, but he thinks Huddersfield Cardiff will be the game of midweek. And those are predictions for this midweek. Do you agree with us or disagree with us? Let us know in the comments and give your predictions. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the Honest Football Podcast, and you can follow us on Twitter at Honest Football Free. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>